Hi, I'm Steve Beal, and this is Ignite TV, and I'm telling you, my friends, I have an amazing half hour plan for you. We're going to be in John chapter 4. We have some sermon footage for you about the woman at the well. She won her city, and we're going to talk about the roadblocks that are keeping you from winning your city. Now, this is how it works here at Ignite TV. Listen, we care about you and your needs, and so we have a toll-free number on the screen right now. And if you call that number, I have my intercessory prayer team waiting on this end of the line. If you call, we'll answer your call, and we will pray for you. We're not a counseling service or or, a chat line. Man, we just going right to the Father through Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, praying for healing, deliverance, touching your finances and your relationships. People, I know there's people watching that are having marital trouble right now. I just feel by the Holy Spirit, man, give us a call. We will go to the Father. He will hear our prayers today through the blood of Jesus Christ. He loves you very much. Hallelujah. And he's going to set you free. Praise the name of Jesus. Hey, so here's how it works. We have that phone number, and we have a second phone number you'll see on the screen. It starts with 267, and that is for text messaging. All you got to do is get your phone out, and you can text me straight up your prayer request. Listen, we write every prayer request down, whether you call or text, and we put them uh, on a form like this. I get every single prayer request of yours, and I'm praying for you all week. It goes on our altar at our church. None, None of your personal information, just your first name and your request, and we pray for you all week. Praise the Lord. And God is answering prayers, man. He is still alive. He is. He was and is and is to come, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Alpha and Omega. Jesus Christ loves you very much. Now listen, in John chapter 4, Jesus meets a woman at the well. He's at Jacob's well in Samaria, and there's a woman there getting ready to draw some water. She's a Samaritan woman. He's not supposed to talk to her because he's a Jewish rabbi. But he's speaking to her about getting a drink of water. And she's like, you shouldn't be talking to me. And he goes, in verse 13, he says, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, talking about the well. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give give to him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. And that's what we're praying for you, that God's power the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you will well up in the name of Jesus. If you're born again, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. Hallelujah. If you're watching and you're not born again, you need Jesus in your life, man, give us a call right now. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go to this sermon. That's just an intro to it. I want to show you a few minutes of this sermon from last Sunday service here at our church, Lighthouse Christian Fellowship. Assembly of God Church, we're new to your channel I'm an Assembly of God pastor. I'm Pentecostal, born again, love Jesus Christ. We know God heals, He delivers, He saves through His Son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to this sermon now in John 4, How to Win Your City. So first of all, Jesus confronts this woman. He says, hey, give me something to drink. They're at Jacob's well in Samaria. They were proud of that well, okay? Jesus says, give me something to drink. And the first roadblock to getting this woman to win her city was religion. Listen, listen, this sounds like religion, all right? How is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Look, she, she quotes the religious rule. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. You know what? If we're going to be religious in the end times, we are going to miss what God wants to do in this church. If we let religion rule our lives, we're going to miss what God wants to do in our lives. Listen, you got to pay attention. you got to stay wide. Don't block me out now. Now that I'm getting into some meat, don't block it out. Come on. When you get your meal at Outback today, you know, you're going to get some bread. They bring your free bread out, and then you're going to get your blooming onion. But you're really going to pay attention when that steak comes out, aren't you? So let's pay attention to this because I'm bringing the steak out first. Listen to me, my friends. If you want to be religious, it's fine, but religion separates people. Religion segregates people. Religion is prejudice. Do you hear me? Religion is only concerned about the upkeep of itself. Holy Ghost all through me, man. This is him. Religion is only concerned about its own health. 
But Jesus is concerned about the Samaritan woman today. Jesus is concerned about the woman who's had five husbands and is living with a guy now. You'd never let her babysit your kids. But Jesus wants her. And if the church will not rise up, in these last days, he'll use them and push us aside. But God would that none perish. He wants none pushed aside. In fact, I, mis- I misspoke. I got the heart of what he wants me to say. Now I got the detail. If you want to step aside, God won't push you. You're going to step aside. He'll keep going. If you get off the train, the train's going to keep going. The conductor is taking the train to heaven. You've got to stay on it. You've got to work on it. God wants to use you mightily. I can think of no greater privilege than to win my city. How about you? And my city might not mean, you know, Pennsburg, but it might mean the people I can speak to. You get me? Your city isn't Quaker Town. Your city, oh man, this is good, isn't Pennsburg. It, it's not uh, Coopersburg. It's not, you know, whatever, Doylestown or wherever. Your city is the people in your circle of influence today. The people you can speak to. She went and spoke to her, the men she knew in her city, didn't she? She spoke to them. You speak, you act, you work, and you exhibit the love and the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. To your kids, to your spouses, to your aunts and uncles and cousins and people like that. Hallelujah. And so you see, I want to win my city. I want to win the people I influence, the people I can speak to, the people I have a chance to be around, the people God gives me opportunity, and that's even the stranger I meet at Walmart. But the very first thing that blocked this woman from being a city changer, a soul winner, was religion. Because from the start, when Jesus spoke to her, he said, give me a drink. She goes, you shouldn't even be talking to me. How can she be a minister for him if she's not even ready to talk to him? Hmm? you got to be able to talk to him. Well, my religion won't let me. There's so many religions in the world. You know, and I'm not saying all of them. There's no religion that leads to, there's, man, that's good. There is no religion that leads to heaven. Well, Christianity does. No, Christianity does not lead to heaven. The gospel of Jesus Christ leads to heaven. Because Christianity is letting two men live together and then one of them pastor. And call it marriage. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want God wants them saved. God loves everybody. I don't hate people. But I'm going to call it what it is. Christianity is a religion. Do you hear me? Now, am I a Christian? Yes, I am Christ-like. Hallelujah. Isn't that what Christian means? Christianity is not so Christ-like anymore. Religion separates. There's not one religion that gets you. Jesus didn't say Christianity is the way to truth and life. He didn't say religion is the way to truth and life. He didn't say your pastor is the way to truth and life. He didn't say Islam is the way to truth and life or Buddhism is the way to truth and life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. No man comes to the Father but by the church board. No man comes to the Father but by the assemblies of God. No man comes to the Father but by the Baptist. No man comes to the Father but by Jesus Christ. That's it. I don't care if you meditate all day, burn incense to some stone idol, or you call on the name of Jesus and don't even know him. Listen, you've got to have his spirit in you. Covered by his blood. This woman was separated by her religion. I'm tired of religion separating and segregating us by ethnic background, by the color of our skin, by the gender we are, by the age we are, by how much money we have. You know what? Jesus didn't die for any of that segregation. He died for you. That's it. But he didn't just die for you, did he? He died for every person driving by right now. He died for everybody. For God so loved every white man. 
that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved every black woman that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved Mexico. No, for God so loved the world. It's everybody. Religion separates. It segregates. It's prejudice. I am not religious. Did you ever figure that out? I mean, I'm not. I haven't been religious for a long time. I mean, I learned about 10 years ago or so, even more. No, I bet, I bet, man, the first time I ever preached a sermon where I said, I hate church, I said it, I said it, was, it was in like 1999. Can you believe that? So uh, that's like 18 years ago. I stood on a stage in front of 100 people and said, I hate church. But I love revival. That's what I said. I think I should have put it a different way. I hate religion. And I love Jesus. And Jesus loves everybody. So I love everybody. Amen. Bless those who curse you, right? Huh? Be good to them who despitefully use you. Love your enemies. Love your neighbor. Hmm? And in 1 John, he says, if we don't love our brother, we're not even saved. You know, if you can't love me, you're not saved. Did you know that? You are not going to heaven. You cannot go to heaven and hate me. You cannot go to heaven and hate. How many of you born again? You cannot go to heaven and hate any of these people that are born again. If you hate your brother, you do not have the love of God in you. I don't care if your religion backs you up or not. You're segregating. You're prejudicing. You're separating. You're dividing. I tell you, Jesus brings people together. And the first thing that kept this woman from winning her city was religion. This story is all about religion, folks. Wait till you hear some more about it. So the first thing, she's like, you can't even talk to me. Then he goes, man, if you knew who you're talking to, you'd ask me for water. You'd never thirst again, huh? He didn't get to that part yet, but he, you would ask me for living water. You know what the woman says? How are you going to give me water you don't have anything to draw with. She had her water pot, right? Listen, I got my water pot. All right, I have my water pot. Yeah, you're not flinching. There's no water in it. She's like, Jesus, you don't got any water pot. And she says, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? Oh, I'll tell you why you're not winning your city. Because of the same reasons this woman wasn't winning her city. First of all, your religion has held you back. Your religion has separated you from the people, the very people God wants you to love and win. The very people God has sent you to, your religion has separated you. And the very second thing, the reason you're not winning your city the reason Christians aren't winning their city is because they're telling God he doesn't have anything to draw with. I feel that. They're saying, we dug this well, our father Jacob. You see, those Samaritans are proud of their well. We built this building for you, God. We got our 15 acres on the hill. We got the best piece of land in the upper perk. We have the nicest uh, road uh, view from the road curb appeal. Listen, you see, we can't see God today, can we? We can't see Jesus today, can we? And we tend to, as Christians, we tend to rely on the things we can see over the things God can do. I've said a lot of important things already and I've just begun. We tend to rely on the things we can see. I brought my water pot. How many preachers, they got their own water pot, they're dipping from their own well, they're going from their own wisdom. How many board members, how many Sunday school teachers, how many people sitting in the pew, they just think they've got it down. You know, I've got my 401K, I've got my retirement. Listen, what if God asked of you to sell all you have and your retirement and go to another country or to inner city or another county and tell everybody about Jesus? Would you do it? I sold my house to come here. A house I built. I picked out the color of the carpet. I picked out the cabinets. It's not a pat me on the back day, but I'm going to tell you, I'm preaching what I've done today. What I'm trying to do in Christ. 
I'm not perfect, neither are you. But, man, I want to win my city. I don't want my stupid, water. how stupid for us to point out our good things to God when there's no one righteous, no, not one. And we have all fallen and sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And our righteousness is of filthy rags. And our wisdom, even at our wisest moment, 1 Corinthians 1 says, when he's foolish, in his foolish moment, he's far wiser than us. God's never foolish, but they're trying to make a point. She's like, you don't even have a water pot. I mean, she's getting a little proud. The first thing that separates you from winning your city is religion. The second thing is your pride. You're proud. You say, I've done it all my way. I've done my, do you see my shiny new car, God? Do you see the good things? And, hey, I put my tithe in. You know, God doesn't want your tithe. He wants you. He doesn't want 10% of you. He wants it all. What if he asked you to sell your water pot? What if he asked you to sell the business that you started with your own sweat and bare knuckles? What if he asked you to quit your job that you worked so hard to get all that advancement in for the last 25 years? What if he asked you to give up your retirement? What if he asked you to sell your house? What if he asked you to liquidate all your furniture and go go do something for him in another place? Does Jesus have supremacy in your life? Or are you the one in charge? You see, you find out. A lot of times as Christians, we're drifting along, you know, and we're doing our lives, and we find out that we've been the ones in charge when we come to God's crossroad where he makes you choose what you're going to do. You're going to do what I want you to do. This is going to hurt you a little bit. You're going to sell some stuff you like. I had a truck. I, God told me to buy a truck. I bought a Dodge Ram, man, 2002 Dodge Ram with a 360 right before they came out with the Hemi, the week, year before. But the first year they had that new body style back then. Man, and he told me to buy the truck, so I did, man, 20-inch rims. And I had that thing. And we moved uh, my house. We moved some friends, a couple friends. We started a church. We moved the church. We moved all kinds of stuff for God. And people who were part of the church moved across town from one side to the other where we planted it. And, and it was amazing. And then God told me to sell the truck, get rid of the truck. I was like, no. And I got a Chevy Equinox. I traded my truck in for a Chevy Equinox. If you have a Chevy Equinox, the new, newest ones are nice. I had the very first year they came out. They needed to work on it a little bit. It was all right. I mean, my wife liked it. You know, there you go. God gives and takes away. You know that? I got an Apple computer. I got my first Apple computer. It was a 12-inch power book. It's probably worth about $25 today, you know. But back then, it was a big deal, you know. And we did a lot of cool stuff with it. And then God told me to get rid of it. No! Can God take your stuff, make you get rid of your stuff, make you change the course of your life? Is he in charge? Or are you going to say, you don't even have something to draw with, Jesus? We dug this well. We dug this well. I built my life. I don't want to be by that well. That well could run dry, couldn't it? We've dug wells and they ran dry. My my grandma had a well, and man, it ran dry. They had to dig down deeper. You know what I'm saying? They went down deeper. They got more water. They had to keep digging, keep digging, man. But when Jesus comes in, man, you're a well of living water coming out. You'll never thirst again. It'll never run dry. It's a river that makes glad the city of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The streams make glad the city of God. I want to win my city. How about you? Anybody want to win their city? I want to win my city. Hey, we're talking about that well. You know, I I ended that sermon footage talking about my grandmother's well that ran dry and they had to dig deeper. And friends, if you're well, you're home today and you're like, man, my well is dry. I'm not talking about your physical well that gives you water. You probably have public water or something. I'm talking about your spiritual well. I'm talking about you've been dried up. Man, you feel burned out. That's who I'm talking to today. You feel like uh, you haven't felt the presence of God like you used to. Uh, You're not walking in the Spirit like you used to. You don't see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit like you used to. Church doesn't feel the same. You're miserable at work. Listen to me. Jesus will give you a drink of his water today. You will never thirst again, friends. He will fill you, and he said here that it will become in you, verse John 4, 14, a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus said in John 7, 38, he that believes on me, 
as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So listen, you don't need a drink today. You need to become the fountain today, welling up from within. And God wants to do that in your life. We're going to have an altar call right now. And you say, there's no way I can come to your altar. You're at a church in Pennsylvania, and you live somewhere in the nation. And we're so glad that you watched today. But you can make an altar right where you are. You can get on your knees. You can stand and, and rejoice and praise God. We're going to show you a song from last Sunday morning. It's called, My Hope is in You, Lord. And man, I love this song. And there's an anointing on this song. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit touch you right where you are. And if you need to give us a call, that toll-free number is on the screen. Call it right now. I have my prayer team by the phone waiting to hear from you. If, you, if you're a little shy to call, you can text message me. That's the second number you'll see. It's for texting, 267. It starts with text me that no, on that number, and I'll get your prayer request. We write them all down. We're praying for you. Here's a sample of many that have come in. And right now I'm saying if your well is dry, praise God, he'll fill it. He'll fill you to overflowing. My cup runs over. Listen, if you need healing in your body, that's why we're here. We're not on the air for anything but to touch you today in the name of Jesus. Enjoy this song. Come to the altar right now. My soul seems out as your word throws down far away. I see to you in my heart, Christ, holy, hallelujah, Father, you're
Friends, we're at the end of the show, and we always take up an offering at the end. We thank you for all your support. It's the only way we can minister the gospel to the whole country. I pray right now in Jesus' name that God would touch your heart, that if he's touching you to give, uh, to ignite ministry, uh, just do whatever he tells you. Let your heart be open to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to give, you can give us a call right now. Our prayer team will take your information, and you can give through the phone, online, and you can give uh, by sending it in the mail. Praise the name of Jesus. And listen, thank you all. We have a DVD of the month to give you. It's an awesome sermon, and you'll see that commercial right now. And we just want to say God bless you and thank you. There's no pressure. We're here by the grace of God, and we'll see you next week. The Lord be with you this week through the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit and the name of Jesus. Amen. When you give an offering of any amount, you will receive the DVD of the month, What If I Went to Hell? It's a, an earth-shattering, heartbreaking feeling you have when you think about it soberly, that your life is over, you've taken your last breath on this earth, you had your last chance to say, Jesus is my Savior, and you're bound for the lake of fire. Call now at 844-447-4700 or visit our website, ignitetv.org, to give an offering and receive the DVD of the month. You can also mail a check and send it to 2786 Garyville Pike, Pennsburg, Pennsylvania, 18073. What did you do to save you? My Bible says, in fact, your Bible says, it was by grace through faith we've been saved, thus any man should boast. It is the gift of God. My Bible also says, God demonstrated his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. To give an offering or to partner with us, call us now at 844-447-4700 or visit our website, ignitetv.org or mail a check to 2786 Garyville Pike, Pennsburg, Pennsylvania, 18073. We would love to hear from you as you partner with us in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need help from our faithful viewers that believe in what we are doing in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. America is in a great time of need. Let's join together to bring the answer to our family, friends, and neighbors. Your partnership of $20 a month is not only going to bless our country with the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you will also be partnering with the blessing God has given to Steve Beal and Ignite TV. To become a 50-50 partner with Ignite TV, you can contact us by mail, by phone at our toll-free number 844-447-4700 or go online at www.ignitetv.org and click on the 50-50 partner tab and follow the instructions for a recurring donation. Thank you for your support.